Hey everybody, uh, no man here, and I am getting ready to eventually do the next part in the uh, Snotling role-playing game uh, that I started. Uh, I also just uploaded uh, the story version of the first um, of the first role-playing session. Uh, and the whole thing that's going on here is I am creating a story, story series. Hey, Pink Gibbous. Uh, I'm creating a story series for uh, for my uh, channel, and I want to build it off doing live streams with you guys. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. Uh, I'm going to start off doing a normal Q&A because I want people to have a chance to uh, watch the story today. Uh, to listen to the first series, the first bit, so they can get caught up on what's on what happened, um, and they know where what's going on so far in the story. Um, and if you listen to the first stream or a part of it, uh, as some of you are, uh, I did not include everything that happened in the first story, uh, the way it happened in the game. I, I want to rearrange things so that make a little bit. Uh, they 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 flow a little bit better as a story, because one of the things that happens if you run a role playing game is you have a lot of combat or like a bunch of things happen, uh, which isn't as interesting in a story. Like uh, you fight this thing and then you fight this thing and then you fight this thing, and in a story you kind of want to keep uh, your combat a little bit more limited. So I ended up cutting out uh, the the night attack by the burrowing kind of monster thing because. You guys basically rolled really well and drove it off early, and it wasn't. It didn't add anything to the story, so I just cut that and moved on to the to the beginning. Hey, everybody! Yeah, I'm a little early. I started about five minutes early, um, and we're gonna give. I'm I'm gonna start off the way I did last time, which is gonna be about a half hour of uh, of doing some Q and A, uh, getting caught up, hanging out with you guys, uh, and give people a chance to. Uh, watch the story that I just put up. So if you haven't seen uh, Snottius the First, uh, which is the result of le uh, a couple weeks ago, we did this role-playing game. Uh, and if you wanted to see the results of it and listen to it, that is up now. So don't worry. It's about, it is about 16 minutes long. It's, it's a little chunky. But if you go see it now, uh, you can listen to it and be back here in plenty of time because I plan on doing this uh, talking until about 1.30, uh, sorry, not 1.30, but um, uh, 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, uh, which is 6.30 Greenwich Mean Time, so PM. Mm. So uh, if people have questions, let me see how, how everyone's doing. We got Pink Gibbous, we got Eric, uh, Ga PR, Zachary Weaver, Carrot and Banana, uh, As Kamak. I don't know if I've seen seen. Maybe you've been here around. It sounds it looks somewhat familiar. Old Captain Fox. Uh, hey everybody. Hey everybody. Ironically, just finished. I'm at work. Watch Snotty as the first lunch break. Thanks for that. Uh, last one was really fun. Good. Good. Noon for noon for here. A uh, few made it without being late much. Yeah, you haven't missed anything. I'm giving people a chance to, uh, to catch up, but yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do, I'm going to kind of do a question, a Q and a about characters, or if you guys want, uh, you can ask, uh, any of my, any of the no man characters that you want questions about their stuff. Uh, I do am eventually going to make a video cause I put up a community post asking people for questions four characters. So if you uh, haven't seen that, that's up in the community tab. You guys might have to scroll a little bit, um, but you can post questions that I'm eventually going to compile into a, another video where people are asking, you know, I did that once before and I think it's been a long enough time that I can do it again. It'll be interesting. Ah, Fiji man in the discord also pop in the streams occasionally. Okay. Yeah. I thought you I was like, Hey, that looks name looks different. It's like, no, wait, I think I've seen that. Um, <laughs> no need to watch it. I'm proud to be part of it. <laughs> cool. Hail the mighty Snodius. Yeah, Snodius did pretty darn good. I thought he was. I thought he was gonna. He was gonna die a couple times, but 
nope, he's he's fine. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. Uh, old man skeletal. My web is acting up, so I might miss most of this, unfortunately. Well, that is unfortunate, but you will have a chance to uh, view the replay and see all what happens. But hopefully things work out well for you. So if you, do you guys have any questions you want to ask of me or questions you want to ask of my characters? Because like I said, I'm going to try to – I want to wait until we have – last time we started with about 30 people. So I wanted to give people a chance to show up. So, yes, the dice gods were definitely with you guys the first the first adventure. That's that's one of the things. I like. It was actually a little hard to explain why a snotling was able to be so successful, uh, but he was. <laughs> um, Snottius Snottius did a, a pretty bang up job, you know, staying alive. So. Uh, sadly can't stay. Got to get back to work. Happy to have caught the start of this, though. Have a good stream. See you, Eric. Uh, sorry we, you're, you're going to miss out, but it happens. Um, question for No Man. If Snotius lives long enough for orcs to arrive, can we retire him by having him ride off into the sunset on a Snotling pump wagon? Um, I think th I've been thinking about this a little bit because the way the game works is if you die then you respawn as uh, an orcoid form that you have that you've grown big enough to have access to. So uh, you guys just unlock squigs as you go along. You'll eventually be able to unlock like um, grots and, and then eventually orcs. So what is theoretically going to happen is eventually Snotius is going to die and then uh, you, are, you respawn as something else. Uh, I think whatever Snotling you are or Squig or whatever you are, if you unlock uh, Grotz or Gretchen, uh, you can then kind of switch over to one of the other one of the other uh, higher Orcoid forms is kind of the way I was going to do it. So which mushroom dish and or brew is Snotius's favorite? He, I don't know if he has if he's that sophisticated. <laughs> Uh, the, the thing that's nearest to him that smells the best, he will put in his mouth and eat it. Um, I first time I caught one of these properly. How is Snotius going to deal with, with a grot, uh, climb in its ear and control it like a brain squig? Uh, we're going to, we're going to find out. You guys are going to be Snotius, um, until he kicks the bucket. Um, and if we, if you guys survive all the way to when, uh, Gretchen starts spawning, uh, you can either choose to become a Gretchen or, you know, you're going to be acting as Snottius until he either gets knocked down a peg by said Gretchen or, or killed. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see how long Snottius goes. If you guys like him, we can keep going with him. Um, but kind of the idea of this, uh, game was to kind of climb your way up and also die a lot. This, the idea of this game was to die a lot. So, but it, you know, heck, this might be a weird achievement in game of, uh, they, I think there's an achievement in the old game Spore. Anybody who's played it where you can uh, win the game of Spore without ever evolving. I wonder if that's something that, that you guys want, are going to try to do. That being said, Snottius can and likely will die very easily when, the, the more you guys get in combat with him. Uh, the, he, he is not invincible by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, let's see. What have we got? Any other questions? For Og, does Commissar Gallus let you play with Brutus? If so, what do you do? Um, Commissar Gallus wouldn't yet most of Ogwen's pet Brutus because we're not very careful. Um, and Brutus is a big dog, but only big to, like, you know, not Ogwen's. Uh, so he doesn't usually let us pet him, but he let me pet him after we got we got done with Molek. Um, let's see. It's not his for life. We're going to grow bigger than Gorguts. Good luck. Snotis becomes leader of a wall, rival to Gazgul Thraka. 
Stonius is just getting into antics while an orc wall is built around him. Uh, his scars make him blue. That will make him extra lucky. For de Emperor, what is the air speed velocity of an unladen squidgen? <clears throat> what you mean, African or European squidgen? Snodius becomes the pet of the war boss. If Snodius consumes the right type of fungus and brew, he may get very smart and very lucky. Ah, uh, he could. Like, he, uh, there are, I think there's a canon thing such as super snots. Which the legend, which I, I can't remember the name of it. It's the legendary uh, runt herder, like the named character that was in, in some ancient edition. But he was all about raising grots and snotlings, and he apparently developed super snots. But I, it's like an old piece of lore. I think, uh, I think, it was mentioned by Lord Baltimore in his Cronan series. Um, I just want to say thanks for answering my question. Also, it's amazing how quick you can change your voice. Yeah, it's it. it it's not that difficult to do a voice if I have like a second to change it. Uh, when I'm doing a live reading and I'm trying to get the pacing up with my script, then I can sometimes mess up and you can, if, if it's a bad take, you can hear me kind of shift my voice. So if I'm having an, a discussion between uh, Commissar Gallus and Og, it, it kind of takes me a second to shift where my voice is. Um, because it's coming from two different places. Like, Og is really deep in the back of my throat. And and Gallus is much more nasally, so I have to move my voice up and, and sort of talk uh, higher in, in my nose instead of down deep in my throat. Yeah, certain voices are definitely harder to switch between than others, especially if it's a voice that's hard for me to do. Like, it's really hard for me to do um, a really deep voice. So if I'm being, uh, this is more or less the voice that I use for Fanuel Metalos, uh, the Iron Hand, and this this is very this is about as deep as I can get. Uh, I think I could get a little deeper. The, I, I can get I can get deeper than that without. That's about as deep as I can get without sounding silly. Um, I think my Christopher Lee voice might be my. If, if I were to be Christopher Lee and, and drop my voice all the way down to here, that's that's about as deep as I can get. But that's that's hard. That's pretty hard to go from that and then switch to something else. Hey, Maximus. Glad you're able to, to stop in. I hope you got my message that we are, in fact, doing the uh, doing the live stream with Snodius today. Um, just want to say thanks for answering my question. Do, do, do for sad grinniest. Uh, how do you keep your beauty? Well, Sad Grinius is, is sadly no longer with us, um, but I think I can I think I can ask him. Um, one of the things I don't have a great voice set up for Sad Grinius. I he was kind of he was kind of a normal orc, but like just more fabulous. Um, Being a proper flash boy. He's always work, worried about looking flash and not just about the crumping. The crumping's the most important. If you ain't crumping, no one cares about how flash you is. Mm -hmm -hmm. I had another question that was up here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I thought somebody asked another question and I was going to answer it and I got distracted. Unladen squidgen, said Grinis Crumpin. Certain voices are harder to switch between than others. Yep. Uh, oh, question. There we go. Do snots get bigger after fighting like orcs? Okay, so orcs are about the size of a person. They start off like about six feet tall, taller if they stand up straight. Uh, they can get really big. Uh, snotlings are about, they are, are gr uh, Gretchen are about uh, waist high. They're about a meter tall. And then snotlings are about half a meter tall. Um, I assume that all forms of orcoid continue to grow, but they kind of get capped because orcs won't let snotlings or grots get like super uppity. So they don't, they, they kind of cap out 
but they I think they'd get bigger than each other and boss each other around. But I, I don't think that's ever explicitly stated. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. So did you practice your Christopher Walken impression? Yeah, I, I have an okay Christopher Walken impression. It's just been a while since I've, I've done it, but um, uh, what's the line? I would try to remember the line from uh, Living Daylights, I think is what it's called. It's uh, it's the Bond movie with, with Christopher Walken and his opening line that he's the first thing that he says is, um, you know, uh, that's quite an impressive stables you have here. It was built by a 17th century du uh, duke who believed that he would be reincarnated as a horse. And being Christopher Walken, kind of, it's a whole uh, persona that you take on and you have to really embrace the strange way that he speaks. Uh, so uh, it's not bad. I don't think I'm bad at doing Christopher Walken, but it's not like I wouldn't do a video where I'm just doing Christopher Walken. Um, uh, do, do, do. Uh, there is no such thing as innocence, only degrees of guilt. How's that? Is that, that 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 sounded not too bad on my end? At, like knowing what to say is is easier than having to do it off the off the cuff. Um, just heard, heard the story only fifteen minutes yet, late. Yet we haven't started yet. I actually realized I don't have my uh, dice roller with me. I'm gonna have to go grab that before we get started. Um. Uh, I always uh, so I always remember that Peter Jackson told Christopher Lee to imagine what a man had sounded like being stabbed in the back, and Lee said, "I don't need to imagine, my dear fellow." Yeah, I I don't need to imagine, my dear fellow. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Working in the British Secret Service, you might know what it's like to to stab somebody in the back and what sound they make. Um. Grotz. Get weird looking in a bodybuilder body? I guess so. <laughs> when a green skin gets beaten up, their growth stops or slows to not get as big as the green skin who beat them. Yeah. So event, it's probably unlikely that like Snottius is going to get to be uh, twice the size, so to be uh, Gretchen size before Gretchen or start popping out of the ground. Uh, he'd have to grow very fast because I think, I think Gretchen take like two weeks to pop out of the ground. Hello, hello. Greetings, greetings. We're just doing a, a brief Q&A, and then I'm going to pop off. I got to go get uh, – I have a dice rolling app on my phone, and I want to pull that up. I could just do it – I think I'm just going to do it on – I'm going to pull up the um, the old uh, D20. Um, the old D20 uh, SRD website because they have a I know they have a dice roller on there or they did I don't know they still have yeah there it goes so got a dice roller cool let's see so I'm going to continue doing questions and in a little bit we got about 10 minutes before we're going to start the actual um, the actual role play, we got 25 people, 26 people, so that's not too bad. Um, to, to the Emperor, what happens when an unstoppable Choppa meets uh, an immovable Choppa? That's a stupid question. Why wouldn't a Choppa be moving? If it ain't moving, then it ain't a Choppa. Because a Choppa is supposed to chop stuff, not stand still and muck about. Uh, let's see. The thing he, the thing was he knew there was no sound in the air is pumped out of his lungs. Uh, yeah. Uh, Christopher Walken ends up in 40k. What does heck do? 
Mm, we don't know what that means. Um, I, I got it. I got a dice roll. It'll be fine. I don't have to. I like doing it on my phone because I don't have to click anything and it doesn't make a noise. I have like at the touch screen, but I can. I don't know. The click will let you guys know. Yeah, I, I left my phone upstairs because uh, uh, I to charge and be a, a little annoying to run up to go get it, but whatever. That's fine. Um. What what's the orcoid growth rate for subspecies? Like when do they come out of the ground? Um, I don't know how long uh, snotlings take to pop out of the ground, but they're the shortest. Uh, my memory, and this is this is I have I haven't found a thing where I can just look it up and find out what the orc orc life cycle is, but I think it's like a couple weeks for Gretchen, and then it's like a couple months for orcs. Um, Christopher Walken ends up in 40k. What does he do? Um, I think he'd belong to like I think he'd be like an inquisitor, or he could be. He I could see him play uh, a Harlequin, or I could see him following Zinch. Well, just you know, being someone whose motivation is not very clear, who does really strange things. Um, just watch the episode, no bear in the episode. No, nah, I, 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 I've said about these, uh, the role-playing game is it's the basis for the story and nothing happens when the bear shows up. It's, it, it is an obstacle. that's fun to play around. It's like, Oh no, you got to fight. And that's fun in an RPG, but in a story to have the bear, the burrowing bear monster thing show up and start digging, nothing happens that's all that interesting. It doesn't advance anything. Uh, nobody got hurt during the fight. Uh, you guys basically got a lucky crit and drove it away, which is really exciting in a game sense. But if people aren't following what's happening in the streams, which I don't think most people are, uh, it's going to feel a little redundant. So I, I decided to cut it. But that's something that I said I was going to do is I'm going to adjust things that happen a little bit to make it work better for a story. It's like, this is the basis for the story. This isn't, I'm not going to literally translate it thing for thing. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get the, the main point of it. Like the important things happened, like getting injured, getting the skull, getting the bone, uh, getting skull bash. Um, even though I think his name was, we, it was club bash, but I think, I think skull bash sounded better. So I went with that one. Um, any other questions? Yeah, shroom, squig, snots, uh, grots, and that's the order. Uh, I had this. I had the snotlings come out first, just cause. But meh. <laughs> if you could add a whole race to 40k, what would it be, or how would it work? Other, other else, how how would you improve another race? Um, I I don't really I don't know what I'd add if I were to add a race. Um. I'd have to think about it for a while. It's like, if I'm going to add a race, what would I do? I don't know. Um, as far as what would I do to improve things? I kind of liked it, the Tau better when they were actually the good guys. And now they're like, not as much. They're, they're, they're like, they're not that much different than the Imperium, except that they have uh, more advanced technology and don't pollute all the worlds that they're on. Uh, but they still have this rigid cast system and it's, pretty it's 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 pretty it's not good are there any particular reason why you made inquisitor torx french yes because getting giving different characters different accents makes them distinct uh if i have a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different voices it's really easy uh if i'm the only person doing voices my own voice has some inherent qualities that are hard to completely eliminate and unless I make every single voice very distinct, it can be hard to tell who's talking um, because I'm doing all of the voices. So uh, I kind of like the idea of all different nationalities being represented in the Warhammer 40K universe. And I, I've had it like randomly. I'd be like, yeah, this random 
uh, a captain who's commanding the Hydra unit for the the Hydra tank unit. I'm I'm gonna make him Turkish. He's gonna be Turkish, and I'm gonna look up a Turkish name and how to do a Turkish accent. And yeah, he's Turkish. But uh, um, it's also fun to do different weird voices. Um. All right, we we do want to be chill in chat. Um, I have a lot of different people who have a lot of different political ideas in uh, that are that are fans of mine, and I've actually been pretty pleasantly surprised that people have gotten along pretty well. Um, and I know we're kind of in a time where uh, people's convictions are and and tensions are running very high, and people are very upset. Uh, Partially because we've been cooped up for a really long time because of quarantine. Uh, but I, this is kind of a time where I would like people to let's let's be chill. Let's enjoy pretending to be a goofy snotling who is trying to build an orc wall. So. Well, we're, we're going to we're going to we're going to be chill. We're not going to we're not going to broach politics as best we can. Um. Many convictions, many beliefs. There is only the Omnisaya. Well, I, I think a lot of people can get behind that. <laughs> I want David Attenborough to nar narrate Snodius? Uh, I could probably pull up. I could probably pull. Um, and here we have Snodius the first of his name, and this Snodling is the smallest most diminutive a form of orcoid. It is they who set the foundation for the larger subspecies that are yet to come. Smaller, weaker, not as intelligent, but still essential for orcoid society. I haven't practiced Attenborough, but that's I, I sort of have his his pacing. Secret life of greenskins. That's more. That's more general. He doesn't usually whisper a ton. He's. Uh, I'm sort of. He, he does sometimes. I, I. I. Here we have the supreme liarbird. That, that's that's where actually the first thing I I've heard of David Attenborough was the clip of of the supreme liarbird. see so anywho um yeah we're getting close to the half hour mark um <laughs> I, I i need to listen to attenborough more i haven't listened to him for a while like i'm i'm trying to do his voice from memory and like i it's not a practice thing um I, I, I can go more British. I can absolutely go more British. I just... Oh, here we go. A BG C. Vitan. Greetings, Maeslanesh. Indulge your passions. Well, uh, if, I'm, if I'm paid for something, I must, I must receive the, the blessings. So... All right. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm now... It's all... Uh, it's all passion... Uh, illicit substances and rock and roll for me. So that's that's now this is this is quickly going to become a not suitable for work channel. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, BGC Vitan. Thank you very much for the donation. What if a David Attenborough was an orc? <laughs> You see there, we have the pansies. Look at them, poncing around, be a great big kids. Now, watch their behavior when I introduce them to me shooter. Whoa! Dugga, 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 dugga. I can see that. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so yeah, we're just hitting about the 30 minute mark. <laughs> so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for the Q and A's. Uh, I'm gonna go through the rules real quick. Uh, this is a kind of a roguelike uh, role-playing game where you're gonna be picking back up as Snodius, despite the best efforts of the enemies that he faced last time. Snodius has survived and thrived to become the snot boss of the settlement. So uh, the way things work is the decisions that are made by the character will be decided by chat. Um, next actions will be decided democratically. So whatever people kind of want to do most in chat is going to be voted on. But if somebody donates a super chat, they can kind of be like, I want this thing to happen. And then that's going to be what the character does. Um, a couple things about donating. Please don't, uh, if somebody makes, pays for something to happen, don't try to outbid them. I, as much as, you know, I want people to, to donate and make good money off of my stream. Uh, I don't want people to pay for something and then not get it. Like, so it, I don't want to do bidding wars on, on what happens next. Uh, the other thing I would ask, and this wasn't an issue last time. I think it was mostly pretty fun and people got into it and weren't, uh, I would ask that you don't uh, pay to do something to ruin the game. I don't think it, it's, it's likely to happen because snotlings are dumb and can do dumb things. And if, he gets killed doing something stupid. That's fine. But I think people like Snodius at this point. Um, and if he dies, it's, you know, it, it's what happens. But uh, I would, I think people might be upset if somebody paid for Snodius to, to do something that's, that's dumb that gets him killed. So, or, you know, something like that. Uh, so, so, you know, we're going to, we're going to play the game. We're going to have a good time. And I uh, want to encourage that kind of thing. So all of the, uh, basically everything's going to be decided by D20 roll. I have a roller ready to go, and I can I can do that whenever. And whenever you guys uh, want to, we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to cover a little bit of what happened last time, very briefly for people who don't know what happened. The story is up now, uh, so you can listen to what happened in the first one, more or less. Uh, but basically, Snodius came out of the ground. Uh, he smelled rotten meat in the woods. He grabbed a stick and a stone, went off into the woods, found a couple of vultures eating the rotten carcass. He fought off the vultures, but one of the vultures puked on him and like burned his face and damaged his eyes. Uh, Snodius fought off the last one blind, managed to drag the carcass back. Uh, by that point, a couple more snots had come out of the ground. Uh, Snodius sort of had his vision slowly coming back because orcs can heal pretty well. Orcoids in general can heal pretty well. Uh, and he dragged it back, and then he divided up the snots. He sent two to dig burrows. He brought one with him to go find water. Uh, a pike leapt out of the stream that you guys went to and ate one of the snotlings who was bending over to get water. Um, Snotius, who had grabbed a skull and a bone club from the carcass, uh, tried to jump in in the actual role-playing scenario, but I changed that a little bit for the story. And then he went; he ended up go, just going downstream to scoop up some water because uh, also his, his skull hat bucket thing fell into the water, so he followed it downstream. Came back. The burrows hadn't been dug. dug. Snotius got mad. He bashed one of the snotlings in the head. Um, I thought he killed him, but then somebody paid for that particular brain-mashed snotling to not be dead so he's not dead and his name is Skullbash. um then everyone uh so everyone came back and you guys made fire uh you built squig pens you got all the burrows completed everything went well in the night there was a there was like an attack by this bear-like uh burrowing creature kind of like a wolverine and you guys managed to hit it in the eye which drives off predators pretty good with no casualties. You guys awake the next day and you currently have uh, three meat squigs that have sprouted up uh, that you can now use as food. Uh, you had seven snotlings, one of whom is um, 
is uh, Skull Bash, who's pretty mad at you for bashing his head in. And you have, uh, when you guys wake up, there are more snotlings that have sprouted up as well. Uh, and you have, so you have six more that have, have sprouted up uh, when the morning breaks. So, uh, everyone caught up on everything? <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a, a cinematic kind of introduction. Uh, Snodius awakes and leaves his boss burrow, because he has the biggest and nicest burrow being the snot boss of everything. And he, as he exits, he see, hears... Uh, screeching and can see that uh, over by the squig pen uh, a number of meat squigs have have popped out of the ground and meat squigs are pretty uh, docile they're they're not hard to move they're easy to slaughter they're, they're la basically just meat on legs that you can eat pretty easily um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through a description of what's going on, and then you guys can can decide what's next. Um, so, uh, you have squigs. You're finding out that the, your your guards that you put on duty over the night kept your fire going, um, and you also have another six grots. So you have a total of thirteen. So first things first. Before we get into what you actually do. Um, you have a, uh, you have a couple of tasks that need to be done. Uh, one is more burrows need to be built. Two is, uh, you need people to be taking care of the squigs and taking care of the mushrooms. So basically moving, feeding the squigs and, uh, taking their, uh, manure and piling it onto the, onto the mushroom heap to keep growing more stuff. Um, so you have digging burrows, uh, taking care of squigs and mushroom farming. And then you have, uh, you need to get guys getting water to bring back and you need, you probably want some, some snotlings exploring. So to completely fill out each one of those uh, groups, you need three snotlings to be assigned to each one and you have a spare snotling to put somewhere. And if you guys put a snotling towards one of the different four things, either uh, getting water, uh, farming, building, or uh, exploring, that helps you guys get better results when you do that. So let's, let's before we start doing personal things, because that's another thing I want to do is I want to kind of keep decisions narrow uh, because uh, if everyone can do literally anything, it's going to take too long to kind of sort through the responses. So let's let's do this first. And then if you guys have something you really want to do, um, well, <laughs> picking nose, begin, begin the day of picking nose. I, I see a couple people saying pick the nose. All right. As you as you contemplate the many decisions that must be made, the, the heavy responsibility that lays across your tiny shoulders, you scratch your boss hat and straighten it. And then in deep contemplation, you pick your nose. All right, so you guys picked your nose. Of course, of course, you consume it as well as is, as is tradition at this point. Um, so, uh, now what do you guys want to put the extra snotling towards, uh, farming, building, uh, this basically gives you a boost cause I'm, you guys will go off and do whatever it is that you want to do. And then like other snotlings will continue to work. Um, so yeah, uh, getting water, building, farming or exploring. So what do you guys want to work? Okay, so we got assigned workers to make burrows, squig dung, building. Farming means more snotlings more quickly. Vote building. So we got a couple buildings. 
Um, we got two buildings and two and two. Uh, we got one explorer building. Seems like it's going to be building. Um, have them bur more burrows for themselves, smaller ones, of course. Um, we'll get the skull bat. It's a good question. What's skull batch doing? I will. Mm, we got a bit of a mix. We're split between farming and building, but I think I'm going to count them up real quick. For one, two, three, four. I got four for farming. I got a couple for exploring, but I think I think building is more. Um, build one, two. Yeah, I think this building is is the most. Yeah, there's more. There's more building. Okay, so you guys assign one for building. Um, there will be basically what's going to happen is you're going to go off and do what you want to do. Um, uh, if you so, what is what is Skull Bash doing? Um, well, let's say that Skullbash is the extra snotling that you can assign, and you've assigned him to build. Um, so he is with he is digging out burrows and uh, and helping to plan out kind of the layout of the. Uh, he, he's one of the older snotlings, and he you know got into a fight with you as the boss. So and he looks a little bit different. So there's a kind of respect that the other snots have to him just because he has a weird lumpy head and that makes him look different. All right. Um, oh, we already, we're already assigned to the extra snot link to do building. So then it, the question is, what do you guys want to do? Um, do you want to go out? Do you want to help with, do you want to uh, join people in exploring uh, do you want to, water's not very interesting, but you guys can if you'd want to. Uh, you can help farming squigs. Uh, you can help do, do building as well. It's up to you guys. So let's see what we got. Pick their nose and, nose and then building. So it will be building. Skullbash could become a squig rider. So that, that, it's been a couple people have said squig rider. That's going to depend on how well you guys farm, because that's going to depend on what kind of orcoids pop out of the ground to see if you guys want to get like an attack squig or something that he might be able to ride. Um, yeah, poison is probably going to be something that Gretchen will be able to do more. Like the most that snotlings tend to know is they can smell that something is poisonous and don't eat it. Um, trying to extract poison from uh, mushrooms or from squigs for a purpose is a, is a little advanced. Um, one shrine at the end of each village, one to Gork, one to Mork. That's not a bad idea. Oversee building process, explore, help farming need a good breakfast. You, well, you will need to eat. Um, go out and smash and get good smell. Explore. Make Skull Bash a squig rider. Have him explore. Build an altar to Gork and, and Norm. Gork and Mork, I think you mean. Unless you mean me. <laughs> um, exploring what could go wrong. Squig rider trained for years in the bushes. Go pick berries, both edible and poisonous ones. Can we name the first attack squig Crumpa? sustenance is important farm squigs to grow i think there's slightly more explore for what to do we're gonna we're gonna have you guys eat and i think you have the fire and before we head out um i think that it makes sense for uh you before you guys all get into your work you order some of the snotlings um to spit roast Okay, BGC Vitan, I will get to your post in one second. Um, whoa. Okay. We got a couple. Oh, hold on. I, old Man Skeleton, I didn't know if you were going to be able to make it. So Skull Bash interaction with the snots wounds your pride. Send Skull Bash to get water where the other snotling got uh, the fish. Lie to him and tell him it's safe. Okay. So that's going to be what you guys do. You are going to send... So you're going to rejigger. You still have uh, the majority of 
the extra snarling still going to be building, but you're going to send Skullbash out to the water. Uh, where the other snotlings are getting fish, you're lying to him, telling him it's safe. Um, and then Old Man Skeletal, just a suggestion for the future, uh, get get a but I guess a bud together to hunt that pike that ate your buddy. Ooh, ooh, get some revenge. Um, okay, so possibly send Skullbash to maybe die. Um, so and then to go get water and maybe die. Uh, you guys are gonna go exploring, and then in the future, let's go see if we can deal with that pike. Um, so th thank you guys very much for your donations. Yeah, Snodius is getting real is getting real cunning. So before you guys sh uh, head out, you give your orders to everyone. So it's not it's no uh, skull bash is gonna be going off to. He kind of eyes you and is like, mur, 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 but does what you tell him because he because you are bigger. Uh, and you guys spit roast one of the meat squigs in celebration for like things going well. And of course, you get the uh, the boss share of the roasted squig, and you are well fed. You're well watered. Um, there's you have water coming back from uh, from the place, and you are ready to set off for adventure. You have your skull hat, you have your bone club, uh, and I assume you guys are grabbing another rock. So you are going to go out and explore with the other uh, snotlings. So you have two other snotlings with you. Um, no, you have three snotlings with you, and you're and you're going to go. You're going to go explore. Um, so. I'm going to do you guys head out into the woods again and you are traveling for a little while. Um, you kind of catch an eye, a look of a uh, skull bash moving towards the water and you kind of grin to yourself and maybe he'll go the same way that, that, uh, that your friend did earlier. And you guys are searching a different part of the forest um, you guys have, don't really know what direction you're going, but you're kind of, but in reality, you're kind of moving in a westerly direction. You kind of went north and hit the water and now you're kind of going more, you're going in the direction of north, uh, into the woods, but you're moving more in like a west direction to kind of explore. Um, and with, uh, a, a couple of you, you guys, you know, you're not huge, but you're about like knee high little critters. And unless you come across like a large predator uh, and you guys all have like, you've been arming guys with sticks and stones. Um, all right. So climb a tree. We're going to go climb a tree. You got a couple of suggestions. Let's see what you get. So you guys are exploring and you're going into the woods. So that's kind of where we're starting. Uh, you want to, do you guys want to climb a tree to, to, to see what's going on? We got climb a tree, fight the trees, burn the trees. Uh, you can try to start burning the trees if you want. Look for resources, possibly things to loot. The <laughs> Hunt an animal. Find a human child and whack it. You guys haven't run across any humies yet. All right, let's let's order one to climb. I think climbing seems to be the thing that has been said the most. Either order someone to climb, because you get you can get a, a pretty good, yeah, climb tree. Uh, why don't we climb tree and see what's in the tree? And you can also get a view of what's going on. That seems to be a pretty. So, so climb, climb. All right, cool. Uh, are you guys climbing? You're gonna order somebody else to climb. Let's do a quick. We'll do a quick uh, clarification. I I, <laughs> I will I will not. Uh, so you. So what is us? We want to do it. Order someone to climb. One one for us, two for other. One for us, two for other. Other snot, too dangerous. Send snotling. Delegate, delegate, always delegate. Order order climb. Okay. Okay. We'll do other. That seems to be the, the way to go. So you guys uh, order the other snotling. Uh, and you're like, climb. And I'm going to see if he can actually make the climb. Because uh, you guys are very small. But yeah, see if you can climb. 
Uh, actually, he does a really good job climbing. Um, this might be your climbing climbing snot. He uh, there's a lot of handholds, and he manages to climb pretty swiftly. Uh, and he's also small, so he doesn't get like caught in brush and stuff. So he climbs up, and he kind of vanishes up into the tree branches for a while. Uh, and you and you kind of wait for a little bit, and you call out. He's like, "What'd you find?" Uh, and he, uh, uh, boss, I found some stuff up here. I found uh, some weird, uh, some weird eggs. I'm gonna bring them down. Or I see something else weird. Uh, so do you, do you guys want to go up and see what he's looking at, or do you want to, or do you want him to come down and tell you what? What you can either go up or, or you can wait for him to come down. It's up to you. His name is Tree Climber. Climbing Tree Climber. Go up. All right. So you guys want to go up? I see two people go. Go see. All right. So you got. All right. I'm going to see if you guys. You guys get a bonus because you're alive for longer. <laughs> okay. Okay. You are really good at things, but apparently you're not very good at climbing. Uh, you. Maybe your eyesight hasn't completely re returned yet, but you're not very good at being able to judge where uh, the branches are. And pretty low down on the on the, you don't climb very high. You like start climbing and you slip and fall. Uh, to the like the other snotlings kind of smirk as you try to as you tried to climb. It's like he made it look so easy. It's this is this is a lot harder. Uh, so eventually, uh, we'll call him Clima. We'll call him Tree Clima. Tree Clima sounds good. Um, a tree climber comes down and he has like an armful. He has like, uh, looks like a clutch of eggs in his hands. Um, and he begins kind of handing them out and, uh, you get the biggest one cause you're boss, but you guys have enough to, to like just eat an egg if you want. Um, so he comes down and he says, yeah, I saw something really weird. I got to the, the close to the top of the tree. And I looked around, and there was a place where there weren't no trees, nothing green, nothing growing on the ground. It's just a bunch of holes in the ground. It's really weird looking, all brown and ugly looking. So he points in the direction of where it was. And, yeah, you have a report of uh, an area that seems to be clear of trees and most vegetation and uh, a bunch of holes. It's all right, so we're gonna investigate the holes. Investigate, send the laughing ones down. Do you guys wanna send the, the, guys that were, the guys that were snickering at you? All right, so you guys, I think this makes sense. Um, some scout grunts. Investigate the holes and bear a grudge against tree climber. All right, so you guys, you guys smack or you guys smack around the the grinning snots. Uh, you decide not to smack tree climber because he saw something neat and he also gave gave you eggs. Um, do you guys still want to you want to hit tree climber? Some people are saying hit tree climber. You've seen a couple of, I've seen it twice now of hit tree climber. Was it the same person? Yeah, hit him, we are boss. Okay, so we have one person saying we ought to hit tree climber. Tree climber's cool. No, he's good. Okay. No hitting tree climber. You guys kind of you don't like beat them, but you kind of smack around the other the other snotlings who were giggling or smirking. You assert your boss and uh, you guys decide to go and investigate. So you're you're sending are you you are sending the other ones and not going yourself? Hey Juan, don't worry about being late. We haven't gotten too far. Uh, you guys sent you guys uh, sent a bunch of things in motion down and basically gave people a bunch of orders and you've gone out to go explore. Not a whole lot has happened. Go as a group. Are we are we going with don't split the party? Is that what we're doing?
We're going with them, but we aren't going down the holes. Going together. Make the others go in front. That seems to be that seems to be what people kind of get. Go as a group, keep the others in front. I think that's that makes sense. Okay. So you you put the the littler ones in front, but you go as a group so you can kind of get the uh, the strength in numbers. Don't split the party logic going together. Um, I'm going to have you guys roll some perception, and all of you are going to get a chance. So this is going to be you. Okay. So this is this is pretty cool because you get to see it, and the other guys don't. Uh, you're you're, which is funny because you're you're. You're blind, so or not blind, but you're you're probably still don't have perfect vision after getting acid spit in your face yesterday. Um, so as you guys are, are moving into the air, you kind of get out of the woods and you're in this uh, cleared brown dead area. It's like there's a lot of soft sandy earth uh, and uh, all around kind of the holes. It's all very loose. So as you step your feet your bare feet kind of sink into this mushy dust, this loose earth. Um, and as you guys move forward, uh, you hear kind of a, a scuttling. Like you, you hear like, a um, uh, and, and like, it's, it's pretty quiet and the other snots don't seem to hear it. And you like immediately just like out of, I'm going to, do this out of instinct is you, you manage to uh, kind of stop them at the edge of the woods and you guys kind of pull yourselves behind a tree and you see this um, chitinous uh, kind of creature uh, with many legs and it's kind of scuttling about and uh, you see one uh, go walk around. It's carrying something and you see it go down one of the burrows. And then a little bit later, another one comes out and has like a bit of earth held like in its mandibles and it kind of dumps it out near the entrance and then goes back in. Uh, so these things are a little, they're a little bit bigger than you. Like you're taller than them, but they are like lying down on the ground. So uh, if you were a human, they'd be, it'd be like seeing something the size of a large dog, like one of the big, big honking 150 to 200 pound dogs, like really big ones. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they, they're, they don't exactly look like ants, but essentially they are like, they, they function like ants. They're, they're like space ants. As far as what you guys have. All right. So, So what do you so what do you guys want to want to do? No, no, they're they're not they are not like two hundred pounds. They are like compared to you, they are like big dogs. They are more they're pr a, probably a little bit bigger than you are. Uh, leave two to watch them and run away. All right, so we we're so uh, I think. I think you got you got the the basic. Yeah, you, they're not huge. Like they're big enough that if you saw them in real life, or in and around your house, they'd be massive and terrifying. Um, but they're not like they're not like tyranids. They are like really they're like something out of um, uh, the uh, the uh, coniferous period uh, or carboniferous period where like we had, where the, the oxygen levels were super high and we had like giant arthropods and, and millipedes that were six feet long. Like they're bugs out of that sort of thing. It's like if ants existed around that time, they're, they're big, but they're not like gigantic big. Um, Hey, uh, so, all right. So, so yeah, prehistoric bug basically. Um, hey Vanguard, uh, I will. I'm doing the game right now, but I will. I'm interested. I will talk about that later. Um, so you guys have a couple of options. I think. I think the simple option is. Um, <laughs> uh, 
what, uh, run, fight, use item. What do you guys want to do? So you, you've run across these, these things. We got another option to ambush it. Do you want to try to ambush one of them as they're, as they're doing whatever it is they're doing? I got one run, got two run. Somebody's trying to tame it with food. Ambush, got two ambushes. Throw rock and see the reaction. Ambush, ambush together, then run. Ambush, ambush, run. We're pretty evenly, we're pretty close. Um, run. It's not a me mega arachnid. It's not. It is, it is, a lot of, a lot of planets have their own things. At the moment, you guys have seen two of them. Um, and they're kind of, they're sort of, they're not in a large number. You don't know how many there are. Not that you guys can count very high anyway. Um, I think, I think people want to do ambush. I think we got ambush or run. I'm going to do a count up real quick. We got a couple of ambushes, a couple of runs. Let's, who actually might be, we'll see it. I'm going to count it up. Am, uh, ambush, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ambush, I got I think ambush slightly beats out run. There are a bunch of runs in the beginning, but people seem to be more about ambush for now. So what's happening at this point, you guys ran across essentially um, uh, an ant nest, a giant ant nest that are roughly the same size as the snotlings. Snotlings stand about uh, knee high. So these things are scuttling along the ground, so they're more long. Than, they're about as long as you guys are tall. And they have like big chompy mandibles. Um, and, and I think we, we have decided to, uh, I think we're going to go ambush. So let's go ahead and have you guys roll some stealth. Okay. You guys uh, find a spot. Like you see a couple of them are, you watch for a little while and you see like that some of them kind of go off along one, uh, along like a trail, it seems like. And you arrange all of the other snotlings kind of in an area that you know they pass through after watching them for a little bit. All right. And you guys successfully stealth. It doesn't seem to notice that you're there. And one of these creatures uh, is walking by. And you guys can go ahead and we're, we're going to go ahead and roll roll some attack. Um, yeah, if, peop, if new people show up, chat, if you can kind of tell them what's going on. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Appreciate it. So uh, what I'm gonna have I'm, I'm gonna have the other guys attack normally. They're gonna um, you guys go ahead and tell me what you want to do. Are you just gonna r jump out and bash it with your skull? Or are you gonna throw a rock? That's kind of your your basic options. So what do you guys want to do? Um, you're gonna attack first, and then everybody else is gonna attack as well. Uh, throw rock, stab. We don't have stick. You guys have the skull. You guys have the the uh, uh, the bone club that you made. Throw or skull bash. Go for the eye. Chuck a rock. Use club. Rock. Rock. Bash head. Throw rock. Throw rock. I think rock is slightly. I think rock is slightly uh, okay. Throw rock with cl tree climber. The rest are going to bash. Okay. Well, you know, it's these things. That we'll, 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 we're going to go with this. Okay. So we got two rock throws. One from you. One from tree climber. Uh, you guys both 
you you go you pop out of out of ambush and hurl the rocks like as hard as you can at point blank range or not quite point blank range but pretty darn short range right at the thing and you you clobber it um it kind of it it you hear it kind of crunch a bit as the as the uh the rocks strike against it and it kind of like uh begins making this clicking sound like as it like kind of uh, raises like these uh, it sort of like raises up and like starts snapping its mandibles at you angrily. Uh, then the other two go in and they're going to try to bash it. Um, one snotling goes forward, tries to bash it. It like kind of backs away and kind of glances off of its uh, armor. The other one moves forward and tries to, tries to bash it as well. And, that one also deflects um, kind of the sticks there. That's it's harder to uh, kind of pierce through the armor as well. So uh, now it's turn. Okay. It, it moves and closes its mandibles around one of the snotlings and uh, severs its leg. It, it, and one of the, and one of the snotlings, not tree climber, but one of the ones you sent in to go bash, uh, keels over as, as it just snips right through its leg. Um, yeah, this, it's fairly, this thing is fairly durable. Um, so, uh, you want to do another round of attacks? Are you guys going to go in and try to bash it? Bash of stone club. Uh, back up, throw rocks. There's only one guy that can back up now and throw a rock because the other guy lost his leg. He's not going to be able to throw real well. Um, we do one guy back up and throw rocks. Grab snot and run. Slide under, go for the belly. Should tame it with offerings just like so you can ride it like wolves. You guys can do that with snots. Um, trying to tame it now is a little is going to be a little hard because you're beating it. <laughs> uh, re retreat and throw rocks. Tree climber didn't lose his leg. He wasn't the one who lost his leg. Got I think people are. I think people kind of want to run and throw rock. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do another round. We're gonna kind of try to break away. Okay, uh, as you guys uh, kind of back away from this because it's it it does seem to be fairly tough. You hurl a rock at it. Um, one of the uh, well, the last rock that you guys have uh, that isn't from the guy who lost his leg. Uh, he backs up and chucks one last rock, and it conks the the bug in the head. And after a number of blows, it finally like the head gets crushed, and it kind of twitches and kind of uh, does that curl up over on the back and like tuck its legs up underneath itself. Um, so, so you guys kill this one. You guys managed to kill this one. So you, you so do you guys want to want to just uh, drag the body? Um, probably one of you can help the one-legged snot. Um, you got a leg. You could, do you guys want to grab the leg as well? Make armor from the ant. Okay, we're gonna do another perception check. Okay, your highly tuned uh, snotling ears pick up more clicking. Um, you heard clicking before, and it was after you attacked it, and now you're hearing more. Um, as it, as you, after you attacked it, uh, you, I'll tell you this guy's out of character. It basically released a, a pheromone to indicate that it was being attacked. And so, um, all right. So we got a couple things. Do you guys want to try to drag everything back? Um, you can get two snots to carry the, the carcass. Um, do you guys, and one guy can try to help the one snotling get, get free. 
uh, if you guys have, th if you leave the one-legged snotling to and, and take the carcass back, you can probably get back faster, and hopefully you don't get caught by the other uh, the other bugs. Do you want to leave, or do you like? Give me, give me. It's pretty. I think pretty much we're going to go bring everything back or leave the one-legged guy. So we're running. We're running at this point. Get everything. Get all. Drag everything back. Save your one-legged friend. That seems to be what most people want to do. Got one person saying, "What? Leave the one leg to be eaten." I think leave one leg. Put the snotling on, on the body like a sled. Okay, I think what we're gonna do. I think most people are, are feeling. Let's let's keep him alive. So you put the one leg on on the body of the of the bug. And he kind of like the legs kind of curl around him. He's sort of holding on to them. And then you guys are dragging it kind of by its smooth shell. I'm going to say it kind of has like a beetle shell. So it's like nice and smooth. And you guys grab it by like the antenna and are dragging it away. And you man and you start running. Uh, and as you kind of go into the forest, you uh, see bugs start to arrive in like the little clearing that you had ambushed in. And they're kind of like, moving around and you can see their antenna waving about and there's like five of them that have shown up uh they don't look like they're chasing you but they're kind of like investigating the area um but you guys um so you guys are running now you, you say we decided we saved everybody so the the bugs are not don't seem to be following you back um or at least not immediately. Um, let's go ahead and see. So you guys come back and you have a nice, uh, we'll decide what to do with the carcass. Let's go ahead and, and find out how everything went with uh, the different jobs that everyone had. So um, we're going to start with building. How did everything, and you guys put an extra person on building. So I'm going to give the bonus to building, right? Yeah, you guys gave, gave it to the building. I'm, I'm correct, right? You guys put the extra person on building. I'm just trying to, I'm confirming. Uh, you saw about five of the bugs. So, okay. So rolling for building. Okay. Uh, so when you guys get back, so building wise, when you get back, you see that already the other burrows for the uh, the new snotlings have already been dug. Uh, and putting the extra guy to work on that, you actually see that your uh, little village now has a wall. Um, has a wall that is circling around the, uh, uh, the village. You now have a little defensive wall. It's not like huge. Um, again, you guys are knee high. So this wall is like, uh, it's about as tall as, it's a little bit taller than you guys are. And you can kind of step up on like a little ledge to look over it. Um, so you guys have a wall. Uh, let's see how farming went. We're going to go see how, how uh, the squig farming went. Okay. Um, nothing extraordinary happened. You guys don't have any. Um, attack squid, like nothing has come up lately yet. Just it's like more meat squigs. Nothing went wrong, but like nothing extraordinary happened. Um, let's go with uh, getting water. How did getting water go? Um, and you guys deliberately. All right, let me see if, if they got. A t so nothing went wrong if things were normal. I'm going to go wrong, go see what happened uh, because you guys sent. Skull bash to get eaten. Okay, so uh, Skull bash, when you arrive, the water's back. Skull bash is still alive. It's not clear what happened, and it's a, it's not clear what happened. Like it doesn't, he do, he doesn't say anything, um, and doesn't mention avoiding the fish or anything that happened. Is you you guys just have water back here now. 
draw Snotius eating a squig sandwich. All right, so let's see what everybody else has. Uh, I've got some. Uh, to do so, we're we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about what to do in a second. Um, I had some questions. Question: What does the area around our camp look like? Is it mostly jungle, or are we in like an elevated area? You guys are kind of on the edge of the forest. Um, you guys, if you ever seen you guys are essentially like on the edge of uh yeah like the forests of northern california uh, like a temperate rainforest essentially like a redwood forest like real big trees like real big huge trees um so that's that's what you're it's not a jungle per se um bathe in his guts uh gork and mork make armor weapons all right so designate skull bash to piggyback one leg um all right so we have i think people want to try to make uh chitin armor um it's it, it's an it's probably it's just going to be enough to make a suit uh, to make armor for one person um you can probably make weapons out of the mandible like if they're two mandibles you can probably make a pretty decent weapon out of each one of the mandibles uh so so is that what you guys want to try to do? Um, make weapons out of the mandibles and make armor out of the out of the chitin or chitin or however it's pronounced. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna roll to see how well you can make it. Um, let's see how we go. Okay, so you um, begin scooping out the bits and like trying to remove all of the all of the stuff that's in there, and you're kind of cutting it through. Uh, you're you're finding that it's difficult to separate it out, so it's gonna take a little while for you to make this, um, and you're probably gonna need to get a better tool to kind of. Uh, Basically, either you, because you could break, you could break this thing apart using your your bone, but it it will break, it'll destroy kind of the the chitin. But if you want to kind of separate and disjoint everything and like break it apart like a lobster shell and scoop out all the meat, leaving the shell behind, you kind of need to find to make something sharper. Um. So it, you guys can do that and just be like, I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a sharp tool. And then that's what I'm working on. Um, you're you're going to have to basically need a tool. You're going to need to take some time to make a tool to uh, process this. You can't just do it barehanded is, is what you're finding out. Okay. So uh, you guys, if you got, guys decide to make some tools, that's going to be like what you're doing in the afternoon. Um and we'll try to, and we'll try to get you to make some ar some armor. I'm gonna see if there. I'm just gonna randomly see if there is a snotling who, for whatever reason, is more adept at armor crafting. No, you guys are the. You guys are the. Everyone else is too dumb. Uh, you're you're gonna be the one who has to do this. All right. So so. Your, your skull is not big. Like, you can't get big enough, like, a uh, thing to make a weapon. Um, you could probably go get some more bones from the carcass you had before and, like, break them so that you have, like, a sharp cutting edge. Um, there's also stone tools. We're not going to – I'm not going to quibble about how exactly or what the tools are. We don't need to waste a ton of time on that. But that's what you're doing is you eventually make some tools during the afternoon that are sharp enough to cut through – like you're bashing some rocks and you get one that's sharp enough to cut through like the the joints and the different parts that you need to scoop out. So you you need to do some more work because you got to like get it to be some armor. Um, yell at the snots to not be lazy to hide your lack of strength. Congrats, Skullbash on water, a point. 
one leg snotling is underboss when you aren't there. All right. So yeah, um, BGC Vitan, uh, you go over and you're like, you can, good job, good job, uh, uh, good job, uh, Skull Bash. You got the water, and nothing bad happened to you. So that's really good. Good job. Anyways, I'm making one leg over here the underboss when I'm not there. So you got to do what he tells you. All right, Skull Bash. Good, good. <laughs> so, uh, so let's see. So you you make you make some uh, you you manage to make your armor, and as you're finishing it up and you put it on, uh, you have another three snotlings that have sprouted up. So you you actually have a fair number of snots at this point. Um, you have one leg who's who's not going to be great at fighting, but he can kind of hobble around and do some stuff. Um, he can work with his hands or maybe. Yeah, do something, but he can't really go out and do things anymore. Um, we got three more snots that have sprouted up, and as you guys are kind of working along, uh, uh, and as you're kind, you manage to slip on your your chitin kind of armor, and you rip off two of the mandibles, uh, and you can basically just hold the mandible and kind of use it like a, a kukri almost, like it's really sharp. Um, it's, it's, it's better than your bone club. So you have a bone club and you have another mandible. What do you guys want to do with the other, with the other one? Give one leg a, make a peg leg. I think we got a couple of, so one, we're going to name one leg as a Smith. You do that. Um, and yeah, one leg can probably make it. Yeah. Let's make w one leg a Smith. He can be the one who's making stuff. Even with practice, he'll eventually like do it. Uh, there's not a whole lot he can do. The good old fashioned uh, give extra mandible to tree climber. All right, so we got man. We got three named. We got three named guys. We got uh, tree climber, one leg, and uh, and skull bash. Who do you want to give it to? We got one to skull bash, one to tree climber, one to tree climber, tree climber. We're going to say Tree Climb is eventually going to make his own peg leg. He, he can do that on his own if he's going to be a smith. Um, tree Climber. Tree Climber. I think Tree Climb is the poop pile size increases a fair amount. All right. Uh, Vanguard, as, as you say, uh, something the squigs ate must not have agreed with them because they are, uh, as soon as they're eating things, that's it's coming out the backside. So... Uh, you guys have a situation where the, the squig farmers are just getting piles of poo and moving it over to, to the thing. So, <laughs> hey, you guys are what, – whatever, whatever it is, as long as it's, it's suitable for work and as long as, you know, uh, we're not making people upset, I think it's fine. <laughs> um, so tree, tree climb them. Uh, peg leg gets keep the bone. So keep the you guys are gonna uh, give the mandible to tree climber, and you have your own armor. As that's all nice and set up, um, I'm going to I'm gonna actually take a little bit of a break. I've been going for close to an hour and a half, um, but I'm gonna leave with what happens now. So you you have all this stuff. Tree climb is well armed. Skull bash got a pat on the shoulder, but didn't get any kind of reward. He's probably, he, it, you're not sure what he's thinking. You're not sure what he's thinking or what he might do. You have yourself a nice suit of chitin armor. You have a mandible as a weapon that's nice and sharp. However, as you are there, you drag the carcass of this thing all the way back to your base. A carcass that had been giving off pheromones to announce an alert. And it took a little while for the other ants to pick up on this. But you made a nice little pheromone trail leading right back to your base. And you guys start seeing 
a, a large number, it's, it's getting to be late afternoon at this point, but at this point you see large numbers of the ants beginning to come out of the, come out of the forest. So we're going to have, we're going to have a, a defense of the village so far. Um, unfortunately, you did not get the event where you have an attack squig, which would have been the result if you did really well on the farming. Uh, you did re do really good on the building, which is what you guys invested in. So you have a uh, you have a low wall. So uh, you guys can discuss what you want to do. That's what you guys will do. Take some time to discuss amongst yourselves what you want to do for battle plans. And I'm going to quick use the restroom. I'm going to get a new uh, bit of tea, and then we can start combat. All right. So you guys discuss amongst yourself. I'm not going to be gone forever. I'm just going to use the restroom and I'm going to come, I'm going to reheat my tea and I'll, I'll be right back. Ugh. All right. So, do we guys have a? Do you guys have have uh, things to, to do? I see fire rock fire and do and doo doo. Uh, pick dung, set on fire to the dung ball, throw dung ball, profit. Okay. All right. So you guys are fighting with. You guys are fighting with uh, with with flaming poo. All right, all right. Throw rocks, fire stick, throw poo. All right. So uh, you guys are currently sitting at. Um, let me do, let me do some quick math. Uh, you had thirteen. So you're at sixteen snotlings plus yourself. Uh, you're facing. Um, uh, you're facing about eight of these of these bugs that are that are now threatening threatening you guys. Um, so let's go ahead and man the walls. Uh, you guys have we'll have um, I'll say that that one leg is by the fire and, and is is basically making the is they're kind of you kind of have a couple guys that are by the poo and by the fire, kind of making your nice uh, flaming piles of poo to be flung. Um, and you guys grab the mess and start hurling it at the bugs as they start approaching the wall. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to give you guys a bonus because you're behind a wall. And you're, you're elevated a little bit so you can throw a little bit farther. So let's see how many we got. Okay. So the poo starts being flung and, and uh, a couple hit and you see that the, the, the uh, bugs like squeal and start clicking angrily as, as they, 
as they start to move towards the base. Um, and uh, you're, you, they, they, they get impacted and like there's this nasty burn on them. And you climb up on top of the wall and kind of roar and go, Aah! and you hurl your flaming poo, uh, your, your, your dried out burning dung ball, and it, and, uh, it strikes one of them directly in the face and manages to catch the thing on, actually catch the thing on fire instead of just burning it. Um, and it like starts to kind of cook and you see it kind of and curl up its legs again and, uh, like cooked inside of its own shell and you start roaring and (laughs) so you guys got one crit and you missed, unfortunately you did miss a lot. So we got, we got three bugs that are hit. Um, we're going to have one more round of being able to throw things and then they're going to reach the walls. Okay. And they get so one more round of throwing stuff. Make epic orc speech. Do you guys want to do do a, a, a speech for from uh, from Snottius the first? That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Make it a little cinematic. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and use the artistic license to say I like that idea. So after the first round and you and you kill them killed the first bug. See? Don't fire it till you see the whites of their eyes. Um, wait, their eyes ain't white. Um, oh, snortlings, make sure you throw stuff really, really hard. For gawk, for mork, and for me, snortiest, the first. And the, all the little snotlings are, wah, wah. Fire to Dung Daka. Thank you, Joseph. Will do. You guys got another round of firing Dung Daka. Okay, this one goes around a little bit better. Um, you throw another round of it, and you bash up a number of them. And of the eight bugs that are there, uh, you have uh, three of them go down. So, well, sorry. Uh, uh, so you killed one of them, and then the rest of you guys throwing dung bombs killed two more. So there are now five bugs left as you're as you're coming up. Uh, burning smell. Burning smell yell. Meat is back on the table, boys! Uh, BGC of a 10, thank you. So if you got people in chat that are not sure what the heck's going on, you can you can explain what the heck what the heck is going on. So appreciate that chat. So now the bugs are at the wall and they're going to they're kind of attacking over the wall. Um, however, they're bugs. It's not that hard to climb over a wall that's a little bit more than knee high. So they're just going to be able to get right in and attack with no real penalties. The wall will be good for other things, but not really this, unfortunately. Um, so they're going to go ahead and attack. Okay. And at the walls, they they are, like, immediately very dangerous. Um, they The five of them uh, climb up and... Two of them are snapping at uh, snotlings at the wall, and they're kind of managing to keep them back, like brandishing their weapons to keep them from getting close. Uh, But very quickly, uh, those snapping mandibles are really dangerous, and they just slice through uh, three of the snotlings in the first first go. So they they cut them right in half and and, uh, pretty easily. Um, you guys are a lot squishier than they are, but you guys do have numbers on them, at least for now. So, uh, you're at the wall. Do you want to try to, so what, so do you want to just have, uh, your guys fight? You can get in the, into the, 
You, you, it is currently thirteen. It is fourteen against five. Is what it is. You guys killed. You guys killed three of them so far total. There's five left. I'm seeing a lot of waz. I'm gonna go for it. Swarm in. I think. I think. I think we're gonna wa. So it's now time to bash guys in with sticks. Matt, throw mash skull to the ants, then kill them. All right. So you're gonna throw mash skull in, uh, uh, or smash. Skull smash is his name. Um, so uh, you're you're mostly zen. Thank you for the donation. You're throwing him in, um, and let's see how he. So bug's gonna attack him. Bug misses. Uh, Skull bash is gonna attack the bug. He also misses. So he's not dead. Um, now it's let's to get everyone else in there. So you guys are now down to 13 plus you guys. Let's go ahead and give. You guys have a pretty good weapon at this point. So let's have you attack. Okay. You get in there and you like stab really good and and the mandibles you find out are like they're kind of designed to slice through the uh carapace of these bugs like oh like real ants they're you know their their mandibles are made for killing other ants uh among other things so you like just stab right into it and you rip and you just you kill one of them outright you're doing a lot more damage with this one um let's go ahead and see what Tree Climber does with his mandible as well. Oh boy. Uh, Tree Climber also like gets in there. He rolls really well. I'm going to see if... Yeah. Uh, Tree Climber climbs up on top of the wall and like leaps down off of it and kind of does the the Sparta leap off the wall and like stabs into the and like stabs into the bug. Like he, he critted. He, so two more down. And that's just two of you guys. You guys have a whole bunch more uh, snot's left to go, and there's only three of the bugs left. So you guys now have uh, a couple more. I, I'm going to roll some more attacks for you. Um, bashing away. Okay, so um, I'm going to do. I'm going to also do some fight back for the bugs. So one second. Okay, so you guys swarm in and are bashing away and bashing away, and uh, you're in the middle of it. You're screaming, ah! and the other snotlings manage to kind of – they're going over the wall, and they're stabbing and bashing. Uh, you manage to kill the rest of the bugs, um, but in the melee, you also lost um, three more snotlings. So of the – Let's see if I can do my numbers correctly. You had 13, went up to 16, plus yourself, so 17. Um, you then lost, yeah, you're down to 10 plus yourself, so you have 11. So now you guys have a bunch of a bunch of uh, chitin that can now possibly be used. So you're now late afternoon. Uh, you have you have Surround them. The, you have won. You have killed all of the bugs, and you guys are and, and the and all of the bug all of the uh, the snotlings are cheering again. Snotius, snotius, snotius. And you know YouTube takes a commission, so I'm going to give you ten bucks. Oh man, thank you. Uh, you should check out JFJ. Just pop into one of his streams and see how he does donations differently. Also, hi, it's Ender. Hey, how's it going? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the donation. Appreciate it. Yeah, YouTube does take um, take a chunk out of it, but uh, I think it's a weird thing. It's like YouTube provides the platform, and they also uh, – I won't, I won't ramble on about donations, but people like to do uh, super chats, so I'm not going to ramble on about that. Let's We'll focus on the – but thank you once again, uh, Ender slash CJ Duggan, whichever – uh, name you wish to go by. Appreciate it. So you guys now have some more armor. Um, <laughs> equip. So you got you have you have enough mandibles definitely to arm all of the snots with those sharp mandible bits, um, and you have enough 
to give almost everyone the armor. So I would think the thing to make sense was don't armor up um, one leg because he's he's not going to be able, he, he can't fight all that well. He, having one leg makes it hard to fight. Um, so so use their guts for base for stew. Sounds like a good plan. You guys are basically having a big uh, crab roast. I think let's let's make it a big crab a big crab roast. And you guys uh, get like a big pot. You get enough. You send a you get water from the from the uh, from the river. It's all coming back. Um, uh, apparently the pike still isn't hungry. So you guys. Uh, you guys basically make a feast for yourselves. Um, and by the end of the day, you have, you have, uh, before the end of everything, before the, actually, no, the sun's down now. Yeah. Cause it was late afternoon. Yeah. No more snots are going to, uh, going to pop up today, but, uh, you guys will have, you guys will have an opportunity to, uh, to get more tomorrow. So, <laughs> Once again, meat is ready. Yell, meat is back on the table. Hey, BGC V10, you've paid enough, so I'll, I will, I will, I will indulge you. Meat's back on the menu, boys. No, Skullbash is still alive. Skullbash is fine. He survived the fight. He didn't. You guys threw him at. You guys have thrown him at the pike. The pike didn't. Was just happened to not be hungry. Uh, you threw him at one of the bugs. The bug he managed to not get killed by the bug. He's he's still alive, and uh, he's a little bit more annoyed with you. So we want to tr try to find the ant queen and kill it. Um, shame Skullbash for poor fighting skills. All right, so I think what we're going to do is – I think uh, – what website am I using for dice? I'm just using the D, uh, uh, D20 SRD. I mean, there's a ton of things that have dice that we can use. So I think we'll do what we did before is we're going to use the Titan to get armor for the snots. That will make them a bit more durable. Um, and arm. you can arm everyone with mandibles. There's enough of them. And uh, everyone except probably one leg can get uh, armor. So you guys are pretty well armed. Have Skullbash be bigger, getting close in size to Snotius? That's what I figured. Like, he's, he, he is, if, if this was Avatar the Last Airbender, uh, you would be Azula and Skullbash is, is, like, uh, is like Zuko. He's, he's not as naturally big as you are. He's not as talented, but he's like resilient and he's angry and all full of vengeful. <laughs> so Skullbash is now getting close to you in size. So you might have to worry about him in the future. So, <laughs> um, but I think we're going to end it there for the moment. I think we're going to, I think we're going to get to, a a cliffhanger a little bit so um you guys all go into your burrows and uh you know you put on the guard you keep the the fire going you have the normal rotation that you that you normally do everyone's pretty full um uh capture the queen oh Capability, you're able to use the pheromone pods to make an effigy to ward off attacks. Alternatively, use them like HL2 pheromone pods. I don't know what HL2 is, but uh, you can. it is a thing to do. Like, it can sometimes work to, to like, put bodies up uh, to, to ward things away. So... Um, Appreciate the donation, Vanguard. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take some. We're gonna say they have some uh, glands and guts that are not edible, and there you're, you're gonna like string them up. Um, there are some farmers that would kill crows and then hang the crows near their uh, near their cornfields to ward off other crows, 
And that's kind of what you're going to do here. I think knowing what a pheromone gland is, is going to be a little complicated for the snotlings to understand. Um, but let's say that you kind of are building effigies to kind of ward them off um, as best as, yeah, ant scarecrow essentially, um, with, with basically the guts and bits that you can't use. Um, oh, Half-Life 2, pheromones attract friendly ants when squeezed. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's, mm, we'll, we'll, we'll start with the ant scarecrows and what we'll do, cause I like that idea. I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to write down that idea because I think that might be a Gretchen idea. That seems a little bit, uh, would that be okay for you, Vanguard? Are you content with that? Um, if I make that like a Gretchen idea, um, that one of the Gretchen can figure that out once you once you guys get one of them. I, I, I'm going to put that down in my notes as like, make sure that happens, that Gretchen will try to use that to control the ants because they'll, they'll be smart, smart enough to do that. Sorry, my my uh, keyboard is in the way of my is bumping into my cord. Anyways, uh, let's see. That's awesome. Super happy. Thanks for not getting mad at Rome. I didn't. No, I <laughs> I'm not mad at people donating me money. It's great. This is like my living. Um, and I'm just try, I'm just trying to make it work in. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna set that as so right now you got ant scarecrows and we'll work in uh, pheromones once we have Gretchen that are a little smarter. Um, Snottius is coming alive. I think he is. I think he is. Um, and I don't think that's a bad place to give it a rest tonight. Oh, use the pheromones to deter and maybe like Half-Life 2 instead of attract them. Maybe, maybe they attack, they get attack ants. Okay. I'll put that in with uh, the the kind of I'll, I'll add that into Vanguard's idea, um, and we'll have that become part of the Gretchen plan once they pop up, which is not going to be too much longer. Um, I kind of want to this what, what's going to happen in the future is the conflict with this. Uh, colony of of bugs is gonna is gonna come to a head um i was i was gonna bring the rp to an end if you guys if you guys wanted to uh i have time if you guys wanted to talk about other stuff but I, let me let me let me end on a little bit of a, of a cinematic note um Yeah, I was going to run an event in the Discord with server where everyone is a snotling in Snotius's camp. Is that okay? Everyone, be, they'll be non camon Yeah, absolutely. Have fun with that. Like, I pretty much am okay with people using my ideas for uh, for their own, you know, if they want to write their own fan fiction or if, uh, or if you want to do something fun with your friends, that, that's fine. Um, let me put up an invitation to the Discord. I can, I gotta forget how to do this. Um, am I missing something? Yeah, invite people. Let me get the link real quick. Let me put that in the, I'll put that in chat. So if people want to join the Discord, uh, you can check that out tomorrow. Uh, Zach will take care of that for you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of a cinematic end to this. So you all have had a great victory. Uh, at the cost of a number of snots, you have defeated the small force, the real, you know, the, the force of invading ant creatures. However, 
you saw how big that they were. If they decide to come back in, in great numbers, uh, they could be quite the problem. So you go, you put up your guards, you enjoy your full belly, um, you know that it's good to be boss, but a few things are nagging in your mind. Because despite your best efforts, Skullbash is still alive. And he has that most Snotlings are pretty dumb. You're pretty smart. And it seems that Skullbash, maybe you knock something loose in his head or something. Uh, he seems to be planning something. You're not sure what it is. And you also know that soon... Soon, you're going to have to deal with that entire hive. And it's only a matter of time before either you guys are going to get exterminated or those bugs are going to get exterminated. Thank you all for being around. And we got Devin Ingram. This has been an awesome stream idea. Thanks for being my favorite author, 40K author since Dan Abnett. That is very high praise. I've, I've seen some of the stuff Dan, Dan Abnett has read. And it's 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 his stuff is really good. Yeah, you guys have the good burrow. You guys have the boss burrow. Um, don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, could you help me setting up channels with with proper permissions? Uh, let me know. Currently, your mod log is open to the public. All right, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I'm gonna probably take a bit of a break, but I will sort out Discord and kind of figure out what's going on. Um, of who can post where. I thought the mod blog people couldn't post on there. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll see what's going on. Thank you all very much. Um, next stream will be uh, next week. I'm, I, I, my thinking is I'm going to do Snottius is going to be like every other week. So I'll mix in other, uh, other stream ideas and Snottius will be kind of a every two weeks kind of thing. Um, cause while this is really fun and I, I really enjoy it, I, I think other people might want other stuff. Yeah. Stadius will, will probably eventually die. He's, he's survived quite well so far. Uh, but snotlings don't last. They just don't. <laughs> uh, but is there a summary of video this 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 video coming up? Yeah, I basically take these role plays and they're the basis for my story series featuring um, featuring Snotius and the other the other orcoids that are going to pop out of the ground. Um, it could be Adrian Pius. Um, we can put it to a vote. I can make a I can make a, a thing on the. Uh, the community tab of what you guys might like for the next uh, for the next live stream. I enjoyed doing doing the the D and D stuff because I it, it's it's tiring, but I don't feel as tired as when um, I actually get way more tired when I'm just answering questions. Yeah, once a week is is when I do my streams. Uh, right now they're scheduled at uh, one at uh, six p.m. Uh, GMT, which is 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and yeah, so that's that's when I'm typically do my my streams. Um, and uh, we'll 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 see what what happens to him. I mean, he's he survived. I thought he was gonna die. I thought he was gonna die um, back when when he fought the, the vultures um, and it was going to be a thing where you guys just keep popping up and, and having to fight things over until you eventually win. So uh, yeah, Fridays I'm going to, um, I, I pious is something I might do, but like it's one of those things where pious comes across as political because he is political satire. Um, he, and I'm kind of trying to keep it light and funny but there were actually a fair number of people that left uh, the channel when I when I did Adrian Pius. Um, but I might do it again. I think I think some people got a, a laugh out of it. Uh, we'll see how people how people want to do it. 
I certainly can do Adrian Pius more. Like his his the way he talks and his intonation is is very funny to me to do. I, I think um, Rush Limbaugh has a very particular delivery, um, or had a very uh, pr particular delivery, which is kind of mimicked and made more extreme. Alex Jones is pretty close to the way um, Limbaugh did things. He's just really mad. Um, but they, they, they're they turning the fucking frogs gay. Like that, that is like, if you just made Limbaugh really, really mad all the time. Um, anyway, I'm not going to ramble on about that. Um, <laughs> But uh, thank you all very much. Uh, yes, 40K is political satire parody, but everyone everyone mad now. Everyone really mad. Um, which I think there's a lot of good reasons for people to be mad right now, but I think people are getting mad to the point that we aren't working together towards getting things done. But... Um, yeah, but it. Yeah, but I know. I know that that under certain weird circumstances, um, certain amphibians like just do change change uh, their sex, um, and because of chem chemical things like that can also happen. But it's just a really funny thing to yell. Is they're turning the frickin' frogs gay? It's sorry. It's really funny. <laughs> it just even if it's true, it doesn't mean it's not funny. Um, Anywho, I will uh, see y'all later. Thank you all very much. I will I will put up some options for what we do for the next stream, um, probably midway through next week. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you for uh, having a fun time in stream. Really appreciate it. I appreciate all the donations. Uh, have a good week. I will be back doing stuff on Monday. So long.